Hello there, many of you might be heading away for the holidays soon, so I thought it was a good time to recap what I packed in my last travel makeup bag. I've been meaning to film this for a couple of months. This was what I took away with me in July for a two month trip to the US and UK, so it was mostly summer and a little bit of autumn that inspired the overall colour mood. The trip was for a mixture of work and leisure, but mostly work, so I packed more makeup options than usual. If it's purely a holiday, I really just wear SPF and pretty minimal makeup steps like I've shown in previous travel makeup bag videos, but for work or meeting new people, I wanted to be a bit more put together and have some variety. Usually I try to keep it down to this small cosmetic case on the right from the Daily Edited, an Aussie brand but they ship internationally and they have stores overseas. But this time, partly due to the size of one particular item I packed, I took my larger Daily Edited cosmetic case instead. Certainly wasn't full to the top, room for some inevitable beauty purchases along the way, but I could squish it and slim it down to squeeze in between clothing in my suitcase. To keep it in tip top shape after travel, I use a baby wipe to get rid of any makeup marks on the outside or on the internal lining too, and just a tissue to wipe down the products themselves. So let's get started. These two are technically part of my skincare bag, but they are a key part of my routine anytime I put makeup on. Let me know if you'd like to see the skincare I packed too. I have normal to dry skin, so starting with hydration and sun protection is key. This nearly finished Glossier Priming Moisturizer is what I put on every morning and have done for the last four years or so. It's a moisturizer, not a primer, but it does prep the skin nicely for makeup. I just had a comment from someone yesterday who tried this and said it makes their concealer sit in such a seamless way. Super light and smooth, more like a fluid than a cream, but I like that lightweight feeling on the skin and it leaves a nice hydrated glow. Then the most important thing you can possibly put on your skin. I wear sunscreen every single day regardless of how much time I'm spending outside because it's easier to always have it in my routine and I love applying this one. There's a highlight on my Instagram on why relying on the SPF in your makeup isn't enough and one extra step applying sunscreen separately doesn't feel like a chore when you find one you enjoy using. Ultraviolet is a Melbourne brand with a range of sunscreens for different skin types and Supreme Screen with the yellow lid became my absolute favourite this year. New all-time favourite really. It's so creamy that it feels more like a moisturiser but the texture is nice and lightweight and smooth. Slightly lighter than the Mecca sunscreen I've talked about before. I apply a lot more than this on my face but my skin looks nice and fresh and makeup looks lovely on top. I'll leave a 20% off code below. It's not an affiliate link, just a discount if you're interested. My base products have been pretty consistent all year. Since it launched in early 2019, the Chanel Le Beige Eau de Teint Water Fresh Tint has basically been the only skin tint I've reached for. I've used up quite a lot of it. This is absolutely water light incredibly sheer and practically undetectable, perfect if you like barely there coverage. It's 75% water and contains tiny droplets of pigment that burst as you apply it and it ever so slightly boosts your complexion. Great for a very natural bare skin look. This was the bottle that was too big for the small makeup bag. Chunky packaging, not good for travel, but I didn't want to decant it either and mess with droplets, so really hoping for a mini version in future. If you've watched my videos for a while, you'll recognize this concealer combo. I very rarely stray from these two favorites. One to brighten under my eyes, eyes and one to cover any spots. Chanel Eclat Lumiere is their highlighting pen, similar to YSL Touche Eclat but a lot more lightweight, but interestingly it's really hard to find these days so I don't know if it's been discontinued. Brands always know how to break your heart like that. Then the Clay de Peau concealer which has appeared countless times here. It's really been the only spot concealer I've used for the last few years because it's the best I've ever come across. High coverage but nice and creamy so it sort of becomes one with your skin. I like to swipe it on then gently pat it in with my fingertips so it just disappears. Moving on to brows and two products that are so well loved they're absolutely falling apart. My brows are fairly dark and full anyway so they don't need much but this is my usual combo. This completely broken and used up brow pencil is the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Lift in the shade Supermodel. I just lightly swipe this all across my brows to sort of shade them in softly rather than drawing individual hairs. Then my Holy Grail Brow Tamer Glossier Boy Brow in brown except the names completely rubbed off. <laughs> Told you they were both looking pretty worse for wear. This is a brow pomade so it's thicker and creamier than a brow gel and it keeps everything in place nicely without feeling dry or stuck down. Onto my favourite part, a bit of blush, bronze and glow. I packed a combination of products that were good multitaskers so I could use them in different ways and get more looks out of my makeup bag. Two cream blushes in versatile shades. The Nude Sticks Nudies Matte Blush and Bronze in Sunkissed has popped up many times. Apologies if any of this is repetitive but these really are what I've been using a lot. Almost time to recap all of my 2019 favourites in a big video. This rosy terracotta shade adds a really nice warmth to cheeks, it can be used as a bronzer but I think I love it most on the eyes. I find it sticks around slightly longer than other cream blushes on me due to the matte texture but it still has a slightly creamy look. Then the Lila B Divine Duo Lip and Cheek in Be Lovely. Another one you've seen here before but this peachy neutral felt like a perfect very me blush shade to pack to freshen up cheeks and also give a summery look on the eyes too. This is the only Lila B product I've tried so I'd love to hear what you use from the brand. The Milk Makeup Bronzer I enjoy is in a big bulky stick so I didn't want to pack that for travel. They've since brought out a mini size luckily but I swapped to the Chantecaille Radiant 
Essence Gel Bronzer. I've been using this since the middle of the year and it's just as lovely as I thought it would be. It's a fluid, so I apply a tiny bit on my ring finger, a lot less than this actually, then sort of smudge that between my ring and middle fingers on both hands to spread it out. That way when you swipe your fingers along your hairline and temples and cheekbones, there's less product to disperse. A little bit goes a long way on me. To finish with a bit of glow, even though summer often creates a glow of its own, I love the RMS Champagne Rosé Luminizer. This shade has actually overtaken Living Luminizer for me. Big call, but I just love the slightly rosy tone on my skin tone. It's a really glossy, lit from within highlight that's lovely on the cheeks and the eyes. Keeping it right in my colour comfort zone with the eyes with shades that are easy to swipe on and just enhance my green eye colour. Skip ahead if you've seen Tom Ford Golden Peach on my channel before. I don't use the gold powder glitter in the top, but I love the creamy peach shimmer below. So easy to swipe on and look like you've put in some effort when you absolutely haven't. The Gillian Dempsey lid tint in Glimmer is sort of a more relaxed, laid back version of Golden Peach when you don't even want to look like you're wearing any eyeshadow, but it just brightens up your eyes. It's a much more thick, balmy texture, so I try to dab it close to the lash line to avoid any creasing, but if that happens, hey, not too fast. A couple of the usual eyeliner suspects too. These Glossier Play Color Slide pencils go everywhere with me these days. Candyland is a shimmery peach that really brightens the eyes if you smudge it just above and below the lash lines, and Jumbo is a bold matte orange for a fun, graphic liner look. For something more traditional and to just deepen my lash line, Charlotte Tilbury's classic eye pencil in Sophia is a nice brown with a hint of shimmer so it's not as flat as her other matte brown pencil, Audrey. I didn't pack any powder shadows when I left but there were a few on my wish list, so I had the Refa 01 brush ready. You might have seen me post about this brand on Instagram before, they were completely built on customer and makeup artist feedback. The 01 shape is nice for blending shadow or patting it flat onto the lid, it's quite versatile, nice and soft but keeps its shape well. I'll leave a big $100 discount code below that Refa's current offering to my followers when you purchase one of their holiday brush sets. And my usual Chanel Le Volume mascara to finish, a long time favourite because it adds nice volume and length without ever looking clumpy or heavy or flaking during the day. I lashed out on lips this time and packed four shades and they were all red. I know that sounds ridiculous but they serve a different purpose and red is what makes me feel like me. One is a sheer balmy shade to throw on without a mirror. One is slightly more pigmented, low maintenance and lasts a bit longer. One is the fun red with a lot of shine. And the last one is the all out pigmented power lip. The Pat McGrath Lip Fetish Balms are one of my favorite sheer lipstick formulas and I picked up a couple more while I was on this trip. But Wild Cherry is a classic, an easy sheer red with balmy shine to throw on while you're out and about. You don't really even need a mirror and it just perks you up. Then the good old Bobbi Brown crushed lip colours. I've raved about these before and I know many of you have tried and loved them too. Ruby is a nice deep red. This formula has the effect of a blotted lip look straight from the bullet. It's matte and quite long lasting so I know it's going to stay in place during a dinner or a meeting but it feels like a regular creamy lipstick. Glossier Play Vinylic Lip on the other hand is a far more fun way to wear red. This click up pen with a cushion tip is honestly one of my absolute favourite products to swatch on my channel because it's just so pigmented and smooth. It looks so good every time. Baby is a vibrant red that you can wear fairly sheer or really build it up and let that shine show. Let me know if you'd like a swatching video with more of these shades, I think I've collected them all now. Finally, a much more pigmented, punchy, bold lipstick for a night out or when you really want to make a statement. Lisa Eldridge's True Velvet Lipstick in Velvet Morning is one of my favourite summery reds. It's more of an orange than the others and it just looks really vibrant and fresh with a comfortable creamy feel. See I'm not going mad, they all have a different red tone and texture. That's it, a trusty mix of makeup and favourites that served me well for a couple of months away. Please share what sort of makeup you're packing for any upcoming trips and if you're heading away anywhere nice for the holidays. And let me know if you'd be interested in seeing an updated skincare travel bag video too. Thanks for watching, see you next time!